Welcome everyone, it's Miss Retha. We're back again for another CKM Saturday. Well, I haven't heard any bad news this week, so that means it's all good news. Nobody has COVID-19. Don't you think that's a blessing? I sure do. I want you to know that I pray for you and your families during these scary times, but we just have to remember that when life is scary, God is good, right? I want to make a few announcements before we start into our lesson today. And the first one is that we're gonna to try to start our Christ Kids Ministry classes back the first Sunday in August. That's our plan, and if everything's safe, that's what we're gonna do. Sadly though, I have decided to cancel Vacation Bible School this year. I just think the risk is too great right now for you and my crew leaders to take that chance. I know you're disappointed and so am I, but I think that's the safest thing for us to do right now. All right, let's get started on our story today. We start a brand new unit and it's called Jesus the Healer. Doesn't that sound exciting? Okay, have you ever been so excited that you wanted to shout for joy? I got so excited when the Hansville boys basketball team made its state playoffs that I shouted for joy. Well, what about when you get that Christmas present or birthday present that you have wanted so long and so bad and you really didn't think you were gonna get it and then you get it? Doesn't that make you so happy and excited that you shout? I've actually cried tears of joy. I cried tears of joy when each one of my children was born. I cried tears of joy when Jesus came into my heart and I cried tears of joy when each one of you were saved too. Well, today's story, we're gonna learn about 10 men that had a really good reason to shout for joy. In the Old Testament, God gave the prophets, Elisha and Elijah, the power to heal diseases and raise the dead. But Jesus is greater than those prophets. He not only healed the sick and raised the dead, he defeated sin once and for all when he died on the cross and rose again. But did you know that Jesus is gonna return one day and he's gonna end all suffering and all pain forever. That's right, forever. Isn't that great news? When you hear about the people in our story today, I want you to think about our new big picture question. And remember, these questions help us to get to know God better. Our question is, why did God create people? Well, the answer is God created people to worship him, love him, and show his glory. We will see why this is the answer in our stories that are coming up in the next few weeks and the one we learned today. So let's go over our timeline, or that's what we've learned in the past few lessons. Jesus' ministry on earth was relatively short. It was only three years long, and he was about 30 years old when it began. He encountered many people as he traveled and taught about God's kingdom. And through his teachings and miracles, Jesus showed everyone that he is the Son of God in human form. And he healed many people. Well, today's story is called Jesus Healed Ten Men. These men had a terrible, terrible skin disease. It was so bad that they had to stay away from everyone, including their families. They couldn't fix this disease on their own. They needed Jesus's help. So let's find out what happened. Here's our video. Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem when he entered a village. Ten men cried out to him, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. 
The men did not come close to Jesus because they had a skin disease called leprosy. Jesus saw them and said, go and show yourselves to the priest. Jesus wanted the men to follow the law God had given to Moses. The law said, a person who had a skin disease had to go to a priest to be examined when the disease was gone. The priest and the person had to follow certain rules so the person could live a normal life among people again. As they went, the 10 men were miraculously healed. One of the men, seeing that he was healed, went back to Jesus. He praised God and fell face down at Jesus' feet, thanking him over and over. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked the man, weren't 10 men cleansed? Where are the others? Only this man, a foreigner, had returned to give thanks and praise to God. Jesus told him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has saved you. Jesus healed the 10 men who cried out to him. The one who had faith was saved. When we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than a disease. He saves us from our sins. We can give him thanks and worship him for making us new. Jesus healed 10 men and one of them was saved. Can you imagine what kind of life those 10 men had? I want to show you what leprosy looks like. Leprosy has caused this boy in Bangladesh to lose his foot and several fingers. Can you see that? And this girl is suffering from a painful reaction to the dead leprosy bacteria in her body. Scary looking, isn't it, guys? Well, back in biblical times, there wasn't much known about leprosy. They didn't know not to touch each other when they had it or to cover their mouths when they sneezed or coughed. That's the way it spreads. The priests were the main people who knew a little bit about it. They were the ones who told you you had leprosy, and then they would send you away to the leper's colony. And then they were the ones to examine you when you were well and would let you go back home. Well, if you notice, some of those pictures showed us where people had lost their fingers and their toes and even their arms and legs. That was caused by the infections that the leprosy set up. Did you know that armadillos can actually be carriers of leprosy. Strange, but it's true. But the good news is that a cure was found in the 1940s and a vaccine that keeps you from getting it was created in 1995. Isn't it amazing that it took that long to find a cure for leprosy? Over 2000 years. Thank goodness we don't have to worry about leprosy today. Okay, let's get back to the story now. Did you notice that the men stayed away from Jesus? They stood at a distance and called out to him instead. The Jewish laws said they were unclean so they couldn't get close to anybody. What did they say to Jesus? Well, Luke 17, 13 tells us they asked Jesus to have mercy on them. They didn't ask for money or food. They asked Jesus for help. Then Jesus told them to go to the priest. And that was weird because you usually went to him after you were healed. But as they went, they were healed. Jesus knew by the time they got there to the priest that they would be cured. Isn't that a wonderful miracle? When one of the men realized he was healed, what did he do? He returned to Jesus and was saved, wasn't he? The man understood that it was Jesus who healed him. And he was the only one out of the 10 men that went back to Jesus and thanked and honored him. The only one. Jesus healed him physically and spiritually. 
and he was a Samaritan to boot. Remember the Samaritans last week that we talked about? You know, the Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. But remember, Jesus took a shortcut through Samaria and he met the woman at the well. And she was a Samaritan, but how did he treat her? With love and kindness, didn't he? That's the same thing he did to the Samaritan man that had leprosy that came back to him. He saved him. Jesus loves all the people all the time, no matter who you are or what you do. Jesus healed the ten men who cried out to him. The one who had faith was saved. When we trust in Jesus by faith, he heals us from something greater than a disease. He heals us and saves us from our sins. And we can give him thanks and worship him for making us a new person. That brings us to our questions from kids. I want you to think about why giving thanks to God is so important. Let's check out the video now. Hi there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for questions from kids. Kylie from Casper, Wyoming asks, Why does God want our praise? Does he need us to praise him? That is a great question. Does God need us to praise him? Well, that I would say no, but I would be really hesitant about saying no point blank there. Let me, let me explain a little bit. Does God need us to praise him? No, he needs nothing. He does not need anything from us. He has existed for all of eternity. Even before he created people, he was getting along fine without us. So he doesn't need our praise from that perspective. However, he wants our praise and he calls on us to praise him for his glory and our good. Remember, everything God does is for those two reasons, for his glory and our good. When we praise God because of how good he is, how beautiful he is, how he has given us things, he's provided for us. When we praise him, we call attention to his glory and God uses that so that we can let other people around us know how good God is. So our praise can be used as a tool to draw others to him. And so in that sense, he needs us to do this so that we can make him known to the world. But here's the beautiful part. God calls on us to praise him because it's for our good. It puts our hearts in the right place. It, it lets us live with gratitude, with joy. And God knows that when we praise him, it's for our good. So he calls on us to praise him for that reason as well. It's really a great thing when you stop and think about it. So does God need us to praise him? Not really, but it's a great gift that he's given us to call on us to praise him so that he can be glorified in, in others around us and so that he can be central in our lives, that we can recognize that he is the most important and he's beautiful and it changes our lives as we live for him. So here's a question back for you. What attribute or quality of God stirs up praise in you? Why do you think God wants our praise and worship? I think it's because he's good to us. Has he been good to you? He has me. You know, we live in a country where we can read our Bible anytime we want to, anywhere we want to. Some people in this world don't even have Bibles, and we have an abundance of them here. All we have to do is read it. Another thing is, we get to go to church and worship and praise him with other Christian people. Some places in the world, it's against the law and you get put in prison for doing that. We don't even have to worry about that. That's a wonderful reason to be thankful and, and worship and praise him for that. And when he died on the cross, he took the punishment for my sins. I won't be punished. Jesus took all that pain and suffering for me. That's another reason I want to praise and worship him. And the best reason to praise and worship him is because when I die, I'll go to heaven and I'll have a forever life with him. Now that brings us to a brand new key passage.
and it comes from Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses, and he carried our pains. But we in turn regarded him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities. Punishment for our peace was on him, and we are healed by his wounds. Y'all remember when Jesus was in the temple in Nazareth and read from Isaiah's scroll? Our key passage is part of that. He told the people that he was the Messiah, and they wanted to throw him over a cliff. Well, Isaiah had written on that scroll that there would be a servant who would bear our sicknesses and carry our pain, and that servant is Jesus. Jesus fulfilled that prophecy when he healed all those people there and the ten leopards. But guys, he was just getting started. What do you think the Samaritan man who was healed realized about Jesus? Well, he realized that Jesus was the one that healed him. And the other guys didn't, did they? He returned to Jesus and thanked him. And then he became a believer. How should our lives change once we become believers? Think about that for a minute. Well, when we believe, God declares us righteous and we have complete forgiveness and then we'll have a forever life in heaven with him. Our lives should change by showing him that we're grateful and thankful for what he sacrificed for us. Let me ask you this. What should you do when good things happen? Well, when God blesses us with something, whether it's a new car or a new pair of tennis shoes or we are healed from a wound or made well from a sickness, the best thing for us to do is praise and worship him because he's the one that did it for us. Okay, what should we do when bad things happen? We should still put our faith in Jesus. We might not understand why something bad happened, but when you have faith, you know that God has a plan for us. He's going to take care of us, and when you're a believer, you're covered by his promise that he will always care for us. God's got us. He's not going to ever let us go, guys. He's in control, and he does everything for our good. You know what? Seems like I've forgotten to do something. Can't really think what it is. Let's see. We went over our big picture question, and we watched our video. What else do we do? We learned something about leprosy and the armadillas. <laughs> then we talked about questions from kids and we did our key passage. Now, what is it I forgot? Can y'all help me remember? What is it? I know, I forgot to do my someone special. I can't believe I nearly forgot to do that. Okay, see if you can figure out who my someone special is this week. My someone special has blue eyes. My goodness, that's another one. Their favorite color is green. Their favorite animal is a turtle. And my someone special loves to watch the amazing world of gumball. Their favorite book is Splatoon. Do you know who it is? My special someone's favorite subject is history. They want to be a zoologist when they grow up, study animals. They are five feet tall. Ooh, my goodness, they're nearly as tall as I am. Any guesses yet? Well, let's keep going. My someone special has one other sibling. That means they have another brother or sister. Their birthday is July the 26th. And my someone special loves to play Mario 
in Rabid's Kingdom Battle. That last one's a new one on me. Okay, we're down to the last two clues. Y'all got any guesses yet? I bet some of you know who it is. My special someone is 10 years old, and they have a pet turtle named Jew. Okay, who is it? Tell me. Not many people have a pet turtle named Jew. I'm thinking Kira. That's right, guys. It's Larkin Jeffries. Congratulations, Larkin. Way to go. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> Glad we remembered to do that. But let's get back to what we were talking about. And I want you to remember that after you're saved, you're going to grow as a Christian and you're going to become more like Jesus. You're going to want to obey him and do what he wants you to do. Say what he wants you to do. He's going to change your heart. And you can be part of God's mission to share the gospel with everyone. And what better way to do that than to do our gospel plan? So let's get our crowns ready, guys. Okay, here we go. Let's see. God rules. God created everything, and he's in control of everything. We sin. We all sin. We disobey God when we sin, and we can't help it. And it all started with Adam and Eve. But God provided. He is holy, and he has to punish our sin. But his son Jesus took all of our punishment, didn't he? So Jesus gave his life for our sins. He took the punishment we deserved and he died on the cross for us. And that's the best gift ever, guys. That gift is called God's grace. And then we respond. You know, everyone has a choice to make. And I pray that each and every one of you choose to make Jesus your Lord and Savior. And when you do, we respond by praising him and worshiping him. If any of you ever have any questions about Jesus being your Savior and want to let him come into your heart, I want you to please make sure you get in touch with me or one of the other teachers. All you have to do is get someone to call the church office for you right now since we're not being able to get together. And they'll get in touch with me or someone that will call you and talk to you. Okay, guys? We're here for you. Well, I think that's about a wrap, don't you? I enjoyed getting to know my someone special, even though I nearly forgot to do it. Uh, you know, Larkin, I'm really going to miss you next year when you move up to the youth department. You've been a great helper and you always know all the answers to all the questions I ask. You're a pretty impressive guy. Well, there's one more thing we need to do. Do you know what it is? That's right, let's say the Lord's Prayer. So bow your head and close your eyes and fold your hands. Say it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, guys, it's been fun. See you next week. Don't forget to pray for everybody to stay well this week. Love you.